Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. Break into shouts of joy, you ruin of Jerusalem. The Lord will rescue his city and comfort his people. The Lord will use his holy power and will save his people and the world will see it. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, the Sunday of hope, when we start preparing for the child of Bethlehem. We light this candle to celebrate the prophets of the Old Testament and to remind ourselves we need to live with watchful expectation in the world. We pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts this Christmas time, be king of our lives today. Amen. Good morning and welcome to this first Sunday in Advent when we think of the Advent hope. I'm very sorry that I'm unable because of the rules to lead worship live this morning in Leytonstone Methodist Church but delighted that through modern technology Leytonstone members can see and hear me and others and join in this act of worship. Our hymns and readings today cover many centuries. Our hymns alone span from around 400 AD to 1967, and that hymn was written in my family's home city of Plymouth. Let us hear an Advent call to worship. Then will the glory of the Lord be revealed, and all will see it together. Wait for the Lord, be strong and brave, and put your hope in the Lord. Our opening hymn is probably one of the oldest in Christian hymn books. It was written by a man called Prudentius, that means wise. He had been a very senior official in the Roman Empire, but in the year 395, he threw in all that way of life and became an ascetic, a vegetarian, and devoted the rest of his life writing Christian verses in the classical style. Two of his hymns are still with us now in singing the faith. One relates to today, Advent 1, and the other one relates to Epiphany. And so we sing together Hymn 181, written by Prudentius so many years ago, of the Father's love begotten.
And now for our prayers, let us pray. Glory be to you, Lord God, King of the universe. Glory be to you, Lord God, dwelling in light and majesty. Glory be to you, Lord God, beyond our highest thoughts. Glory be to you, Lord God, giver of light and life. Glory be to you from the company of heaven who see you face to face. Glory be to you from your people on earth who have seen your salvation. Glory be to you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of confession. Almighty Lord, in Jesus you have called us to walk as children of the light, but we have preferred our own way, the way of darkness. We have not been willing to let the light of Christ into every part of our lives. We have not been willing to respond with wholehearted obedience and total dedication. Forgive us, because we find it easy to profess faith, but hard to translate it into action. Because we say so much, but do so little. By your renewing love, grant us assurance of pardon and strength to live up to our calling through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now a prayer for Advent. In the long, dark days of winter, the cold and dismal days of waiting for the spring, you surprise us into life by the joy of your good news, loving God. You come as King of the world. You come as our Deliverer. Forgive us when we are not prepared for you. Open our eyes, Creator God, to see your presence within our lives, to see the good being done all around us, the relationships that are loving and supportive, the challenges to human indifference. Open our ears, word of life, to hear your message of salvation, to hear the offer of a new, full life in you, the call to follow you as your disciples, your encouragement as we walk the way of self-giving love. Open our hearts, Spirit of God, to receive your power within us, to receive your gifts of hope and joy and peace, the love that binds us together, the courage to witness to your good news. You are coming, Saviour God. Help us to be ready for you, alert and prepared, to see and hear and serve you this Christmas and every day of our lives. Amen. And now we say together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now a meditation, written as if spoken by an early disciple. It has been written. How often have I heard these words on the mouth of priest, rabbi and Pharisee, time and time again the same old refrain, it has been written. And it's true of course, it's there in black and white just as they say, God's word to his people for us all to see the sacred words of the law given to our fathers by God himself, spelling out his commandments, the history of our people, the wisdom of the teacher, the poetry of the Psalms, the visions of the prophets, all that and so much more, God's word to us. Yes, it's there all right, but though I've always believed that, somehow it's never really touched me. Not deep down in my heart where it matters. I've accepted it, yes, but the words have never spoken to me in quite the way I hoped. Now, though, it's different. Astonishingly, incredibly different. For I have only to think of Jesus to find myself saying, it has been written. Why? Well, just listen to this. You, Bethlehem, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who dwelt in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Need I go on? I don't think so. It's all there in the prophets, foreshadowed in the law, foretold from the very beginning. And it happened. The prophecies fulfilled in a way I never for a moment expected, brought to life in Jesus Christ. And now, when I read the scriptures, I don't simply see words on a page. I see the word made flesh, the one who alone makes sense of it all, God with us. It has been written. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, reading verses 3 to 10. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. 
for in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. The first Sunday in Advent is about the Advent hope. Advent splits itself into four discrete Sundays. Next week, we look at the Word of God in the Old Testament or Hebrew Scriptures. On the third week, it's John the Baptist. And the fourth week, it's one of the two parents of Jesus. And this year, it will be the story of Mary's Annunciation, where Janet and I will be pleased to lead worship again. Hope. Can we really speak of hope in this year, 2020? Certainly to me, I've never experienced a year like this before. Happily, at the time of recording, neither Janet nor I know of anyone who has contracted COVID-19 definitely. But we are aware and share with the great grief of those who have lost relatives in this past year before the time expected, for whom the empty chair at the Christmas meal will be even more poignant. We look back and we may ask why. We can have explanations from science and accept them. We can make our own judgment on how well our government has handled this particular crisis. But we still ask the question, why? Well, let's look back again. But this time, let us look back, as so many parts of our New Testament tell us, in hope. Do we say signs of hope? Yes, we do. We see the dedication of our National Health Service and the growing appreciation by a wider public of all those who work in it. Not only our consultants, junior doctors, GPs and nurses, but everybody who works in the health service. We learn too to appreciate the work of people who keep our homes supplied with food or work in the supermarkets and those delivery drivers who have brought the things we need to our homes, including the presents which we have already sent or are about to send in the post. All these give hope. Hope is not false optimism. That is something completely different. I'm sure it's going to be all right on the night attitude. Hope is deep. We look in this period too and we look back and look forward and maybe my words will be out of date by the time you're watching this to the tremendous progress and skill and knowledge and dedication of those who work in the scientific world working towards vaccines and also drugs to reduce the impact of COVID-19. They are doing God's will. We as a church do not do share the joy of people around us. Perhaps this year we can't go shopping as early as we wished. Perhaps the office party has been cancelled Perhaps the school which your children or grandchildren attend is not putting on a nativity play. Or if it is, like this service, you will see it 
only on your computer screen. It's a great shame, but it's something we've got to live with for the time being. The theme of hope is there in the epistle for this morning, which is why I chose it. Corinth is a long way away and a long way in time, but it's so much like London. It was a great port. It was a centre of entertainment, a centre of sport and a centre of government in the Roman province of Achaia, more or less equivalent to modern Greece. But there were problems. Like all great ports, it had its peculiar problems, which were shared later by Union Street Plymouth of immorality. It was a church split between different groups following different church leaders who had allowed their church offices to give them an overrated sense of self-importance. And in this letter and the one which followed, Paul was able to advise them, indeed take them to task on this matter. But this introduction to this letter and the one which follows is about hope. It's asking people to look forward to the day of the Lord, how God's kingdom is going to be established. When I was young, preachers would begin a sermon with a text. But I'm leaving mind to the end. It's the last verse, verse 9, of that opening chapter, as translated in the, New English, in the Revised English Bible. God keeps faith. That is the message of Advent. That is the message of hope.
a prayer of intercession for Advent. In the prayer, the bidding is, your kingdom come. Will you please respond with the words, your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let us pray. Holy God, ever with us and ever on your way towards us, we look to you this Advent, willing your kingdom to come but knowing it's not ours to take. So come to us in the many guises of love. Meet our longing, enter our waiting. Give life to our hoping. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Advent God, hope of the hopeless. You alone give us reason to go on. Give hope to those who this day all over the world are hungry for basic gifts. Food to stop the children aching with hunger. A home to put pictures on the wall. Education to open the door to a job. Justice to give everyone a chance. God of hope, give hope to the hopeless. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Advent God, love of the loveless. You are the one who never fails to love to the limit. You love without question the loveless, the unlovely and the unlovable. May we do the same. We're aware of people or groups of people whom we instinctively reject because of what they've done to us or what they represent to us. We identify them in our hearts right now. Give us strength to love, give them strength to respond and give us the gentleness to love ourselves as well. God of love, give love to the loveless. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Advent God, joy of the joyless, you are the source of inexhaustible delight. In a world of desperate pleasure and stale smiles, take us to the place where true joys are to be found. We pray for those who face Christmas and the New Year with deep apprehension, knowing it to be a time where much true poverty is revealed. Poverty of love, poverty of friends, poverty of purpose and spirit. In silence we pray for particular families, including even our own. God of joy, give joy to the joyless. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Advent God, God of those who think themselves godless, you are the rock on which our lives are built. Have mercy on those who try to live without you and lead them gently to the truth that sets us free. Come afresh to the minds of those who think they've thought their way out of your reach Come afresh too, to those of us who think we have it all taped, for whom your mystery and power have become dulled and routine. Come afresh to the hearts of us all, whether they be full of distractions or swept clean and empty. We long for you to be central to our lives and central to the life of the world. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Holy God, this Advent we set ourselves to longing again, longing and waiting and hoping. We long for your kingdom to come and for this world to be transformed, for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. But the glimmerings of that new world have also to become real in us. So come, our Advent God, with the promise of a new birth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The work of the church continues. The buildings of our churches have to be maintained. And so it's very important that whatever form we choose to give, that we continue our giving to our four different churches. I'd like to thank, on behalf of all the church treasurers and ministers concerned, the donations you have given, particularly those you have given recently. And we'll bless them with a prayer. Lord, we thank you at this time for the great gift of Jesus. Help us to appreciate all the good things we have in life. Take our gifts, and with them take us, the givers, that our time, our talent, our energy and our love may be used in the service of your church and your building, the building up of your kingdom of peace and joy amongst all peoples. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is a well-known and well-loved hymn of Charles Wesley for Advent, Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus, in 169. We close this first Advent Sunday service as we say the grace together. The grace, the grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.